Well, thank you everybody for coming indeed. Uh, we're here to uh, really mark, I won't say celebrate, uh, I'll say mark our first anniversary since the setup of the fundraising regulator, which uh, I have the honor to be chairman. Uh, on the platform, are, they'll introduce themselves, but our four uh, members of our uh, extremely uh, industrious board, uh, and they're each going to do a short presentation on different aspects uh, of our activities. Um, a year on from our launch and 18 months from the beginning of our setup period, I'm delighted that the man who started all this, Stuart Ellington, is here uh, and to see so many of our key partners uh, and charities represented. Today we're publishing our first annual review, copies of which will be available at the reception desk following the publication of our annual report and accounts on our website a few days ago. The review summarises uh, what we have actually achieved in our first year. We've put in place a, ro uh, a robust process for handling and investigating complaints uh, about fundraising, produced comprehensive guidance on data protection, increasingly important, and direct marketing, working closely with the Information Commissioner and we've begun to amend and update the code of fundraising developed and are today, or actually have today, launched the fundraising preference service. From today, members of the public will have the opportunity to manage their own contacts with charities through the service to opt out from contact with specified charities, charities that they specify. All the information about how to use the FPS is on our website and my fellow board member Jenny Williams will say more about this in a moment. But I believe we have developed a solution which is usable both for donors and charities and dovetails neatly with the Information Commissioner's consent requirements. And it was one of the key recommendations uh, of the Etherington report. From the outset, we have put a tremendous amount of effort into building the trust and confidence of the sector. Over 100 speaking engagements and seminars with various parts of the sector and wherever possible contacts with individual charities. We've also developed close working relations with the NCVO and its counterparts in Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, the Charity Commission and the equivalents in Northern Ireland and Scotland, the ICO, the Institute of Fundraising and the Higher Education Funding Council. But that is not by any means a comprehensive list of partners. Collecting the levy, the voluntary levy, which uh, pays for us, has not been straightforward. All but a handful of larger charities have paid, and we will be publishing, I think, a list of those who have signed up uh, very shortly, I think this week, on the website, I think, uh, tomorrow, I think, is that right, Stephen? Yeah. Uh, but there's still a long way to go with many of the smaller charities, smaller compared to the very large ones, so they're still fairly substantial in size. Among the 1,960, we have actually invoiced. But this isn't just about the money. Contributing the levy and registering are all about charities making a commitment to ethical fundraising and to working constructively with the regulator. I do sense on a positive note, a very positive note, a significant shift over the last 18 months and the majority of larger charities ready to work with us and keen to ensure that they are compliant with data protection and direct marketing requirements. I, I couldn't let this moment pass without uh, saying thank you on behalf of the board to Stephen, uh, Stephen Dunmore, our Chief Executive, and the amazing team that we've recruited uh, that have made all this possible in such a short space of time. But we'll move on now to, the, to four short presentations on our work over the last year. And following that, I'm hoping to persuade Stuart to speak to us about his take on progress uh, to date since the cross-party review of fundraising and we will, of course, leave a few moments at the end for your questions, for which we hope to have answers. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the Deputy Chairman of the Fundraising uh, Regulator, Margaret Long.